The biggest risk to the average user's accounts being breached isn't some master hacker targeting you and breaking in. It's actually companies like Facebook or LinkedIn losing your passwords in a data breach. Now, the reason this is dangerous is because a hacker can use a tool like hate mail in order to use just your email address to look up old passwords you used. And because users tend to reuse these passwords, this represents a pretty big vulnerability. We'll explain how this works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While big data breaches are often in the news, the average user might not understand how it actually relates back to them. Now, when a company like MySpace or Tumblr or LinkedIn loses your data, the passwords can be lost in a number of different forms. Now, in the worst possible form is plain text, meaning that password is just out there and anybody can search it. But another form is in a hash version, which is better, but not necessarily perfect, depending on the hash that was used. Often these hash lists are brute forced and then those lists are sold on the dark web, allowing people to make money to use them for all kinds of fraudulent things. Now often you'll find a random account gets breached because it used an old password that was lost by a third party service. And today we're going to dive into how a hacker can use this information and a specific tool called hate mail that's able to parse through it and find an example of an old password that might either let us into an existing account or give us an idea of the kind of password that that user actually uses. Now, this is the foundation of the Have I Been Pwned database, a database of 1.4 billion passwords, which we actually downloaded and are going to look up against today. But uh, the Have I Been Pwned database just tells you the source of the breach and whether or not you have been breached. It doesn't tell you the password, and that's the big difference between that and hate mail, which we'll be using today. Now, in order to use hate mail, you'll just need Kali Linux and Python. So the requirements are pretty basic. So once you have those together, we can begin. Now, taking a look at hate mail's GitHub page, we can scroll down and see that this is actually a pretty interesting tool. Of course, we have the ability to take a single email address and use it to look for associated passwords, but the abilities of hate mail actually go much beyond this. So you can see the features are kind of expounded upon here, and there's even some um, animations, but primarily this is powered by the data that is attached to it, AKA the number of password breaches that this is connected to. Now there's the Have I Been Pwned database, there's Shodan, there's Hunter.io, and there's a number of other different services we can use um, that require an API key in order to work. Now that's actually pretty straightforward to set up, but today I wanted to do a more simple local example. So I went ahead and downloaded a very, very large database of uh, breaches that uh, makes it really easy for us to just run this last usage example, which is against a local file. So we are going to run against the breach compilation. And this is a, a compilation, there's actually a pretty good medium post about, um, that is 1.4 billion uh, leaked passwords and email uh, um, credentials that were just kind of put out on the internet. And somebody, uh, I was able to find them because there was a forum post saying, hey, usually people try to charge for um, all these things that have already been leaked. I'm just gonna leak them myself. Uh, so here they are for free. Um, and you have to understand that these credentials are worth something to people on the dark web or other parts of the internet that are trading uh, these sorts of credentials and want to turn you know, some money on the ability to sell access to other people's accounts on forums or other uh, places where people trade this sort of stuff. So again, it was super easy to just go and find a 40, I think it was a 44 gigabyte file, which is called the breach compilation. Now the breach compilation is kind of cool actually because the way that it was compiled and laid out eliminates duplicates and puts it in a way that allows you to search this database relatively quickly, just a couple of seconds per um, lookup. Now that's significant because you have to think 1.4 billion different results, that's a lot to be going through. So you can either use the API call um, where you're searching through uh, an online database or you can try to download a database yourself in order to connect it to hate mail. Now, again, you can do a couple different things with this. You can either search for an individual email or we can go a step further and start chaining some of the attacks we've learned in other videos. So I wanna show you an example here so we can really see how powerful hate mail really, really is. 
So let's say we want to attack an organization. And here we're going to go into uh, the Guardian because they're an organization that I know, since they're journalists, probably use PGP. Now, if I was running an attack against an organization and I wanted to take every single email in the organization, hate mail is actually capable of parsing this. And I'll show you this in an example. So first we'll go ahead and run the harvester and get a big list of emails to attack. And once this process completes, we should see a pretty, uh, pretty complete list of email addresses associated with the Guardian's domain, which an attacker could use to then create a text file, uh, which I've created here, guardian.txt, and feed all these employee email addresses we found for whatever organization we're auditing into this text file. Now, the next step will be to actually put it into uh, hate mail. And fortunately, the installation process is extremely straightforward. In fact, it's pretty well documented here, and I'll go over the various things you need to do for a local installation to work. So first, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have Node.js installed. So if you don't, you can type, type apt get install Node.js. Then we'll need to make sure that we have the uh, link from this repository, git clone, uh, and then the rest of this URL here. We'll go back to our window. And of course, this will tell us that we've already downloaded it here. Oh God. Okay, well, now I have hate mail within hate mail. That's fine. Uh, and because I was already within the folder, I'll, we can change the directory. And then in order to install all the requirements, you'll just type, actually, I'm going to change the instructions a little bit based on my experience. Pip3, pip3, uh, install tack r requirements.txt. I found that this uh, installation actually failed. Uh, T, X, T. Uh, I found this installation actually failed when we use uh, Python 2. So instead, make sure that you use Python 3 when you're installing it and when you're actually running the subsequent command. So let's give you a very basic example of how this works. And I'm going to go back to our, our example to show you what a typical run looks like. Now, I'm going to scroll down to the example here. And once we do the installation of all the requirements, we should simply be able to, within the folder, see our uh, hatemail.py. And that's what we'll be running in order to um, look for different passwords associated with an email address. So a simple query is python3 hatemail.py tac t for target, and then the target email. So we're going to be connecting this to our breach compilation, which is organized in a way that allows for fast searching. So in order to do this, we'll need to have a local version of that file. Now, if you want to use this with an API, I encourage you to look at the other instructions. But since we'll be doing it with this, going back to our example, I wanted to show you what this turned up when we did a search for all the Guardian journalists. So let's scroll all the way to the top and take a look at how the search went. So the actual command for this, again, is python3 hatemail tac t. And then in this case, we've added a file instead of just having a single email address uh, that we're searching for. Now, this will actually parse every single email address in the file, and we just separate them by a new line at the end of each um, email address we want to search for. And then tack bc for breach compilation, and then the local address for where the file is located on your system. Again, this is a really big file, so make sure that you are aware of that before you start downloading it. It is like 44 gigabytes or so. Lastly, we'll type tac tac local to let the script know that we're running off a local file when we're making the API calls. And then when we press enter, we can see that it parses every single file, uh, every single email address in this list that we've given it that we found via the harvester. Now, when I scroll through, um, we see that most of them don't have any breaches, but importantly, a couple of them do. And the passwords associated with them are truly terrible. Now, what this does is tell us, here we go. Um, so what this does is, is it lets us know that this particular individual has lost a password and maybe uses passwords that aren't so secure because this one is particularly bad. And scrolling through the list, we can also see that uh, there's another one. All in all, we found two journalists at The Guardian who have had their passwords breached, and we can actually look at the plain text password associated with that, which is really powerful. It kind of gives us an idea as to whether that person is good at picking passwords or not. 
And in, the, in this case, it looks like these two particular journalists picked some really bad passwords. So with that in mind, let's do a more simple result so we can see it live. We did that earlier to make sure that it would work and also it took a really long time. So do keep in mind if you create a really long list to search from, it can take a good amount of time to search through anything more than about 10 different email addresses. It does work, but it will take a little bit of time, but you will probably be surprised by some of the results that you see. So let's try tom at myspace.com. This might not work, but if it does, then we'll know Tom's password and we can also see what it looks like when it does not work. Wow, so Tom at myspace.com was apparently used to register a whole lot of accounts and it looks like the majority of the passwords used to register those accounts were super, super offensive and we will need to blur a lot of these because they are horrible. They are not only bad in terms of quality, but they're also bad in terms of the words they use. So um, keep in mind that sometimes people will use a, uh, an email address they don't actually own in order to register with one of these services. Um, the only difference is whether the service chooses to validate the email or not. So if you sign up for a website that doesn't require you to validate the email address, then you can use Tom at, at myspace.com too. And if that website was breached, then your password for that account would also be breached. So this could ex uh, include, uh, this could explain some of these, uh, results like this that come up if you get a whole bunch of results and they seem kind of all over the board. So you can see the way that this works in general. I would like to put in one of mine, but I did and I got a bunch of results back and I don't want to put it on the channel. So the lesson here is that a lot of these passwords can come back to haunt you. And if you want to try this out against your own email address or your parents' email address or something like that, we all ended up taking pictures of our parents' uh, <laughs> of our parents' e uh, passwords and sending it to them, reminding them that they needed to change it and never ever use it again. Now, if you want to go through and check your own accounts, the smartest way to do so is to create a text file and then use it here in order to make sure that all of your accounts haven't been breached at the same time. You can either go through and take your organization's email addresses and insert them into a text file and run them through this, or you can go ahead and run all of your accounts through yourself. And the nice thing is all the requests are made over the server, so you're not just trusting some random service with all the lookups of your passwords. Now the biggest takeaway from using hate mail is that you cannot be reusing passwords. Especially old passwords that you use in multiple different websites will give away your accounts to an attacker, especially for people that are just trading these publicly available lists and building bots that attempt to log into various accounts that are linked to those emails. Instead, you should use random passwords and not just passwords that are maybe something with the name of the website tacked on to the end, because if a hacker intercepts a couple of those, it becomes really obvious the pattern that you're using. Now, you should try using something like LastPass or another password manager to keep those passwords really random and unique and not have to memorize all of them, because trying to keep them all in, all in your head is exactly how we get these weak passwords in the first place. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, shoot me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.